Okay, Captain, what are we playing today? This one, huh? Today we'll be looking at Shaq You on today's... It's pronounced Shaq Fu. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Today we'll be looking at Shaq Fu on this week's two-hour episode of 60 Minutes. I don't know about sports could possibly fill up a sports arena, I suppose. Nonetheless, I have a general idea of who Shaquille O'Neal is. Center for the Orlando Magic, 1992 to 1996, ending his career in 2011 with the Boston Celtics. His star rose around that time when it was thought that basketball ability would translate well to other unrelated venues. This is why there are four Shaq albums on the market, along with a handful of motion pictures, most, if not all, of dubious quality. And let's not forget this infamous video game I have in my hand right here. Reviewing famously bad video games is not really my shtick here at Television Gaming House of Pfeffer Incorporated, especially considering I never actually experienced it. But curiosity got the best of me when I stumbled upon a website with the sole mission, in their words, to liberate all the copies of Shaq Fu from existence by buying them. Tug in cheek as it may seem, it definitely piqued my interest. Could it really be that bad? With absolutely no prior experience and only a quick scan of the instructions, let's play Shaq Fu. Shaquille O'Neal, AKA Shaq, Shaquille Bounty Hunter, Enforcer of Justice, Shrek Shaq. Shaq Fu was a multi platform release, initially available for the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo, with ports later released for the Game Boy, the Game Gear, and the Amiga. The Genesis version actually has more playable characters and stages than the SNES version. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing depends on your opinion, I suppose. The story goes that Shaquille O'Neal and his faithful tag-along Pepsi endorsement travel to Tokyo for a charity basketball game. Shaq decides to sightsee before the event and meets a martial arts master who charges him with the task of entering another dimension to fight a mummy and rescue a kidnapped young boy. Why Shaq? It's his destiny, of course. <sighs> That little cluster of pixels on your screen is Shaq, and you have to run around and find active spots to fight various opponents. Although you could challenge them in any order, you'll have to defeat everyone on the first island to activate the bridge to proceed over to the next island. If you're not familiar with the game, good luck running around mindlessly trying to find that last fight, because the game gives you no indication of which little tiny area is still active. The actual one-on-one -on -one combat is no different than any other tournament-based fighting games that were all over the place at the time. It's your typical best of three match, with the goal being to reduce your opponent's life bar to nothing. The graphics are fairly decent, but not exactly memorable, with the possible exception of Shaq's stern finger wagging during the pre fight intros. The motley crew of characters, likewise, are largely forgettable. While some do have some interesting special moves, like a colonel with his machine gun or Voodoo with her doll, they all seem to be culled from the big book of generic fighting game archetypes. Even the final boss, Set, is nothing more than the boring old mummy. He did the monster match. The monster match. Pretty much any of the characters could have been the final boss and it would have made zero difference. The fighting game mechanics might be a teensy weensy bit terrible. I'm not a fighting game aficionado, but I know that my playable characters should be relatively nimble. Not Shaq. Moving him feels like steering a tugboat in peanut butter. And while you have a couple of special moves at your disposal, don't even bother with them. By the time his wind-up animation finishes and he releases the projectile, his opponent is likely somewhere else. Before long, you end up leaning heavily on the cheesy strategy of cornering your rival and unloading quick attacks like punches until you're declared the victor. Come on, Shaki chan wake up. There's some other baffling control issues present here as well. Why are there two different kinds of block? The hold back method for close attacks and the button press magic orb for projectiles. Maybe it makes sense logically, like how exactly does holding your arms up keep dangerous things from hurting you? But why would Shaq Fu start trying to introduce logic when we've already established a story where an NBA star is the only one qualified to solve a kidnapping perpetrated by supernatural creatures? I know I shouldn't question video game logic, but they've driven me to it. Also, there's a taunt button. It's great to have handy if you're feeling bad for the computer and you want them to win, but really, what I'm trying to say here is don't press the taunt button. Oh, in case you're wondering, yes, there is a blood code. A, B, C, C, B, A. But don't expect there to be any sort of over-the-top Mortal Kombat-esque violence. It just adds a couple of red pixels to the proceedings every now and again. 
The game also has a versus mode for upwards of two players. Here you could choose from any of the character and utilize their stable of special moves. It's good to have, but unless you have literally no other fighting game available, why bother? Anyway, just to wrap the story mode up here, Shaq defeats Set, saves the stupid boy, gets to his charity basketball game on time, and whoa, what's Beast doing there? Those wacky otherworlders, I tell ya. So that was Shaq Fu. Do we need to take all our copies, have them gathered up and tossed into a large volcano while dancing around maniacally laughing? I don't think so, that's a little extreme, I think. While yes, the game has some serious issues, it wasn't entirely the worst thing I've ever played. I will say the premise is absolutely ludicrous. Giving Shaq center stage in some flimsy narrative without a hint of irony doesn't do the game itself any favors. I know Shaq is a damn fine basketball player, and perhaps even a better rapper than my cousin Robbie, who can't rap at all because he can't talk, because he's six months old. But exactly why does that qualify him for dealing with the whole kidnapped by mummies in an alternate dimension rigmarole? Eh, who cares. Meanwhile, I should mention that there's another website dedicated to sending your unused Shaq Fu cartridges, but this time the goal is preservation. And besides that, there's also an Indiegogo funding campaign to release a sequel to this infamous title entitled Shaq Fu, A Legend Reborn. As of the filming of this episode, they're at 102% of their goal, which means yes, it's coming out. And it's even supporting a good cause, as 5% of their profits goes to the Boys and Girls Club of America. So between the websites, the jokes, and the upcoming sequel, it seems people sure are entertained by the mere existence of Shaq Fu. So in that regard, the game did what it set out to do, albeit not in the way that Electronic Arts originally intended. At any rate, this is Dave from TV Games. I am going to play some more of Not This Game. See you next time. Who is Robbie? He says, it's my cousin who doesn't exist. <laughs>